James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Ladies and gentlemen, a geomagnetic storm is now underway. As predicted, a co-rotating interaction region, a SEER, hit Earth's magnetic field today. It might have been amplified by the flank of a coronal mass ejection arriving at the same time. The impact sparked a G1-class geomagnetic storm, which could intensify to a category G2 or G3 in the hours ahead. High-latitude sky watchers should be alerted for auroras mixed with moonlight. Tonight will be almost a full moon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a contest with a giveaway tomorrow at World News Report today at gmail.com. If you want to email your pictures in, include your name and your location and a quick note saying that we're able to use them for commercial purposes. Be greatly appreciated. Let's go into the actual storm itself. All right, heading to our estimated planetary KP index. We were in a G1 geomagnetic storm, and we're currently in a geomagnetic disturbance. So we've already seen three hours of a geomagnetic storm and a geomagnetic disturbance each. On some of the other KP indexes, we've seen six hours of a geomagnetic storm and three of a geomagnetic disturbance. On the Fredericksburg KP index, just a geomagnetic disturbance. And on the most sensitive KP index, we've seen nine hours of a geomagnetic storm. And that's really, guys, going to be a G2 geomagnetic storm. Those sensors are at a higher level, meaning they're elevated in altitude. All right, checking our work with the German KP index. Over in Germany, we see that we've been in a geomagnetic disturbance here for three hours that actually was only a disturbance for well nine straight hours in germany now it is nighttime currently in germany and they're not directly facing the sun but that storm will spread all over the globe once it infiltrates our atmosphere as it's doing now i thought we would actually watch the electron count move way up as the storm hits us here you can see it hit around 1500 UTC time. We'll play that back over. Just no electron count whatsoever. Here is zero. And then we move up to about the 50 or 60 range here. And you can see that we actually got impacted by solar winds and plasma, as a matter of fact. So we look like uh, we actually took a part of that coronal mass ejection, as I will show you in just a moment. All right, taking a look at our real-time solar wind satellite, Discover, our brand new satellite, we see first off in red here, well, our BZ is south, which means our shields are down, and our shields are actually at a southern, well, angle as well. Well, they did pop up here right after the initial impact, but that's not a good position for these to be in at all. Looks like we got hit with plasma moving way up here in just the last hour or so. We see uh, some readings of 40, 49, some more readings. I can grab them, 40, and there's some higher than that that I just can't grab. Uh looks like the plasma has moved up to around 50 centimeters cubed, believe it or not, which is amazing. We'll take a look at another chart so we can get a little bit better reading here. And you can see that the solar winds were pushed ahead of the plasma, this being the coronal mass ejection from the X1.9, and this being the first bit of solar winds, although it will increase again from the coronal hole that was earth facing see the temperature shot up it is slightly going down we'll see how long the plasma lasts as soon as the plasma uh well passes through the solar winds will start back up looks like we had a peak over 500 kilometers per second nothing out of the ordinary and that plasma definitely is that cme striking 
Now, the CME might have uh, struck quicker or sooner than the winds from the coronal mass ejection, the high-speed winds. And it looks like that's exactly what happened, pushing some of the winds at a higher speed in front of the plasma. Exactly what we expect to see here with increased temperature, although the temperatures are uh, falling quickly. I don't know if the plasma is going to fall off or not. We have to keep an eye on that. But you can see the impact itself right there. All right, over to ACE, real-time space weather. Also at Lagrange Point 1, 1 million miles or above Earth orbiting. <clears throat> Basically the same exact thing we see. Looks like the plasma even went higher here. Maybe to the 70 range here. Shields were down and now they're actually tilted up. Our shields are down here in red. Our BZ here. But the angle has actually improved. The plasma is hitting real hard here. It pushed the winds ahead of it like we would expect. And that temperature shot up with the plasma until the winds. Although, for some reason, it shot right back down. That's a little bit questionable. Let's move over to spaceweather.com or spaceweatherlive.com and see if we can get a better look at the plasma and solar winds. Let's first look at these solar winds. They did go up to right at, let's see if we can catch it, 500 kilometers per second. They use ACE here at spaceweatherlive.com and they're saying at current wind speed, it will be 55 minutes to reach Earth from the measurement here at ACE, which is at the same orbit at Lagrange Point 1, 1 million miles above Earth orbiting as Discover, our newer satellite. Let's look at the density. It looks like we definitely are just starting our geomagnetic storm. All right, this way we can really get a look at the density here. Topped out at 70.26. That first hit was 58.27. We're currently at 30.63. Some decent sized hits in there though for sure. 60.19. Uh, so that's some fairly dense plasma. And that's going to be from the coronal mass ejection from the X1.9. Right? The X1.9. We're going to take a quick look at what's called our magnetometer and see what it has to say about a geomagnetic storm underway. One of the best ways to see if we're actually in a geomagnetic storm or not is to look at our magnetometers. And here we see that we touched into a KP5, or a G1 geomagnetic uh, storm event. We came off of that, and we're almost back in that range. We're in disturbance range currently, but that's a really big move from positive to an actual storm level right here. So that's a good indication that we're definitely being hit by a geomagnetic storm. Now the wind stream from that coronal hole should last approximately 24 plus hours. So tonight I want you all to take as many pictures as you can and send them in via email to world news report today two t's report today at gmail.com with your name and location permission to use them commercially if you can although sending them in will be uh, thought of as permission to use them commercially so ladies and gentlemen uh we did get hit by that chrono mass ejection Looks like uh, we got flanked by it, although it showed some serious plasma there at 70.26, at 58.27, and at 60.19. That looks like that might have been the highest plasma we're going to see. I'll let you know in about an hour, right? Again, this was measured about 55 minutes above Earth. Uh, so it's going to take about 55 minutes for the solar wind and plasma to reach Earth uh, from the point we are right here, where we're seeing 
35.03 and it is going up. Our magnetometers and KP indexes are measuring from the ground level. We can see that we've come out of that geomagnetic storm, but we're probably headed right back in it, or we probably most definitely are headed right back in it with solar winds if the CME is finished with its glancing blow. It did push the winds out in front of it like we expected, but the actual solar wind stream from the coronal hole will be ongoing now for over 24 hours. So again tonight, Aurora Borealis, Aurora Australis, please send your picks in for a show tomorrow night, Thursday night on the 4th at 9 p.m. Central here in the U.S., and we will have uh, everyone pick a winner, and that winner will receive a gift in the mail if they live in the United States lower 48, unfortunately. If not, you can have your gift mailed to someone in the U.S. lower 48. God bless. Please share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.